how can you use social media without losing your sanity around it? Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Lydia Lee, the work reinvention coach and solopreneur strategist at Screw the Cubicle. I've helped hundreds of budding and existing business owners to create intentional businesses that's designed from their genius zones so that they can experience true freedom with their work and in their lives. So if you're watching today's video, you're going to be learning how to create healthier ways to use social media to grow your business without being a slave to the algorithm. And most importantly, how to really humanize how you use social media to grow your audience and build your brand. If you are new here, welcome to my channel. This channel is dedicated to helping you to transition out of the nine to five and create a meaningful business that is an authentic expression of who you are. So if you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell button to be the first to know when new videos drop on this channel every single month. Step one in using social media without losing your sanity is to start with choosing meaningful metrics that matter to you. It's very, very easy to fall into the trap of counting vanity metrics like the likes, how many people are on your followers list, and all the things that you can't depend on and rely on to bring meaning to your experience of social media from the beginning. So we need to take control in what is the purpose and the intention for us to use social media that are beyond the vanity metrics, right? So purposeful intentions is going to allow you to show up for social media in a way that is going to be not only meaningful for you, but meaningful for the followers that will be following your channels and your platforms as time goes by. So we want to start by redefining social media, right? In the beginning of time, social media is really to socialize. And I think over time, we've gotten a little caught up in the metrics of numbers and the glitz and glamour of looking good on social media rather than being transparent and honest. And you know what? Together, we can kind of take a look at that and go, that's not for me. <laughs> and I want to do something a lot more genuine and authentic in how I want to use social media. So you might want to redefine social media as a place that you connect with other humans genuinely, where you might build relationships one follower at a time. It might be a place that you use to share your voice and practice sharing your voice, you know, um, the ability to kind of understand your style, your vibe, what it is that you feel meaningful to share takes practice. And that can certainly be your inaugural intention for showing up for social media. It doesn't have to be for your followers, to start, it can simply be a selfish reason for you, a place kind of like a diary, a journal of your journey with your business, a journey in your life that you want to be sharing. And you can build this platform of social media, whatever platform you're in, sustainably. You don't have to focus so much on the big numbers to start and really, really focus on the fact that people who are following you are the right people and that, you know, the, the quality of the followers are so much better than the quantity of the followers. So in my example of my own business, before I started to really think I needed to kind of throw away social media and never use it again, I really explored different alternative ways that are meaningful to me. So I thought about how I connect and build relationships and friendships in real life. And they're usually one-to-one, -one, right? I like to speak to people. I like to have deep conversations with people. And the way traditional social media was taught to me just wasn't really hitting the mark for me. So little things that I did were things like when I had a follower that I thought was a great fit to be on my channel, I would send them a personal voicemail. You might not know this, but there is a voicemail option in the DMs of Instagram, even on Facebook, on LinkedIn, that you can send a quick 60 second or shorter voicemail to your audience. And when people can hear a personal message, it feels intimate, it feels real. And let me tell you, people are really surprised and they do reply back. And it really helps with creating that authentic connection to start with. And when things feel authentic to your people, they're gonna respond, they're gonna remember you, and most importantly, you're going to stand out <laughs> from other, you know, social channels that are not doing that and acknowledging that that person is a real person. Another way that I use social media for my benefit is to use it as a way to test my ideas, right? I 
looked into teaching what I know. I looked at ideas and concepts that I was creating. And instead of just guessing if I think people should know this or is this important for people to learn, I shared it on social media in a little IGTV or a video on Facebook or a live stream, something real simple that I can just show up for in my strengths and just start sharing and teaching something, right? And when I could teach things about my work, teach things that are valuable, it gets me feeling pressured of just needing always to share about my day and all the random things that people do on social media and to do something kind of relevant and valuable to my audience. And I only show up on social media when I have something to say. I don't need to show up every single day. And that might be a way that you might do it too, to maintain some sanity in having spaciousness with how often you're working on your business versus being on social media. So feel free to share insights when they arise, not pre-planned, not pre-scheduled all the time. If you're a little bit more impromptu like me, that might be a much healthier way to really show up for social media. Now, if you're interested about learning, if there are other ways to market your business without social media, you might want to check out my video literally called, Can I Market My Business Without Social Media? And I really share some alternative ways to grow your audience without being on social media at all. Now, I want to take a little quick pause here to check in on you. What do you think you want your intention and purpose to be when it comes to social media? For me, it was connecting with people one-on-one -on -one and building genuine relationships. So I want you to declare that in a statement for yourself today by just commenting what that purpose and intention is in the comments and make that your beacon of purpose with how you want to show up on social media. Two is to be authentically you and also relevant to your audience. As I mentioned, social media can be a platform for you to share your voice, test out your vibe and your tone and the message that you really want to be sharing with your audience. But it's also a great way to really test out content angles uh, and what is relevant to the pain points of your audience, right? And so a great way to look at this is whenever you're showing up on social media, really Think about how you want to show up. If you are more of a conversational kind of a uh, person like me, you probably don't want to script things, right? You might want to show up on a live stream, something that allows you to not read a script and something that allows you not to have to be a perfectionist and edit things, right? Um, or maybe you're a bit of a writer, right? And that might be a way for you to share your, your knowledge and your wisdom doing a skill set uh, or an approach of communication, right? That is in your genius zone and in your superpowers. So first of all, just kind of think about how you want to be sharing information, right? Is it vocal? Is it video? Is it written? Is it stories? What is that style and vibe that you want to show up for your audience? So when you are testing your voice and your ideas, you the trick is really to find that intersection between what you're interested to talk about that's really relevant to your business, but also what your customers want. So go ahead and ask questions, right? Social media doesn't always mean that you come in with guns and blazes <laughs> and go, here's everything I know. Um, a great way to use social media is to create collaboration, right? Find ways to be open and actually be asking powerful questions from your audience so that they tell you what they want to learn from you. In conjunction with sharing your advice, right, and your insights, it's also great to just start meaningful conversations, right? Tell people about something that's important to you, ask them questions, use social media as a bit of a market research tool, right, to figure out what are the common FAQs from your audience so that you can be of service to your audience. So you'll never have to guess and wonder about what you should be posting or sharing because you're going to make your customers the priority of what you create um, and do in your social media. If you are asking questions, you're going to get some answers, but also another way to reflect back on what it is that you should be sharing is making notes of your concepts and your approach when you have helped others in the past. So if you are a coach, any service-based provider, um, anyone that helps human to human, you've had conversations and you've solved problems for people in the past. What has helped others move forward in their goals and in their journey? Make Take some time, make some notes of that and use those as a topics, right? To create content on your social media, um, your social media platforms, you know, reason to market, right? Or the whole purpose of marketing is not just to sell 
our services and products. It's really to plant helpful seeds for people to be educated and nurtured into being ready for the work that we are charging for. So think about what do people need to know and what do they need to learn before they're motivated to buy the thing you're selling? What's that pre-questions? What are the pain points that really they're so stuck on that you need to talk a lot about on this inaugural stage that they're seeing you in social media in order to nurture, educate, and then convert them to learning more about your business. So talking to your customers is really important, right? Getting the insights from the very people you're hoping to help is really important to learn how to create content better on social media. Um, and if you are wondering how to do that, how to talk to customers, how to create market research opportunities through real conversation in order to know what to market and how to market your services, you might want to check out my market research interview, how to use proper market research to find out what people want to invest in and buy. And I hope that that's helpful for you in content creation for your social channels. Step three is to be consistent in how you're showing up in your social platform. And there's no hard and fast rule for how often uh, you want to show up in your social channel. It's great to think about a frequency. It's great to think about a format that's going to work for you because consistency is a lot more important than the quantity of times that you force yourself to show up on social media, right? We want to really align our energy with what's really, really going to work for our personality type and the boundaries of how we want to use our energy for things like social media. But being consistent is also going to ensure that the people who are following you, the audience that rely on you, know when to rely on you for help, for sharing helpful content. So how do we kind of preserve our energy to ensure that we are doing things sustainably in a marketing activity like social media? Well, first of all, I believe in the power of one. Um, really focusing and starting with one platform that suits your personality type and your strengths and how you show up, the format of how you show up for that particular platform also really matters for your energy. So for example, I have a lot more fun and joy when I'm doing things like videos. So I will do more of that <laughs> instead of other things that will cost me more time and more energy because it's not in my genius zone. So I want you to ask yourself right now, how do you want to show up that's the most simplest and easeful and aligned way on social media that matches your personality type and your strengths? And when you know that answer, you can commit to a schedule of coming up with content, sharing your wisdom uh, that is realistic, right? Choose a frequency that works for you. Maybe it's once a week to start. Maybe it's only twice a week. And when you get used to that habit and that practice of that ritual of showing up that way, you're more likely to create great healthy habits around that inaugural plan. And then later, you can add more slots if you feel it's necessary or you're having fun with it and you want to add more time that you want to spend on social media. The whole point is to choose a simple plan that you are uh, that's realistic and that you're actually really going to show up to do, right? So simplicity and alignment of strengths is going to be really important so that social media doesn't seem like such an icky thing, right? Or a forced activity that you really have to be doing. So just to give you an example of my schedule, I will usually commit to maybe one or two wisdom posts. So this is like things that I know my audience really wants to learn. And I give away that generosity of that content a lot on my social channels. And then I spend about an hour, maybe 30 minutes a week, voicemailing people. <laughs> and that allows me to build the relationships that I want that's off the static post and into a much more um, real conversation. And that's about it. That's probably about an hour and a half of my time every week. And that frequency just really works for me so that I can really focus on other parts of my business that is also going to grow momentum for my success. All right. If you found this video helpful today, I would love to know that you did by liking this video and subscribing to this channel so that you get more content like this that can be helpful in your business building journey. And of course, don't forget to share it with someone else that might benefit from watching this video today uh, by just sharing the link for this video and hopefully it'll be of value to them as well. And 
The conversation doesn't have to end here. You can find out more free resources and helpful content on my website, screwthecubicle.com, or follow me on my social channels as well on the interwebs, and we can connect there as well. Thank you so very much for joining me today, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.